Okay, if there is no question, we can start and we can recap what we did in the last class. So last class week, last um, Sunday. Uh, so we talked about um, how do we create uh, sales order, with, uh, how we create delivery without sales order. And um, so we did that exercise. Then we did the, how do we create a store location and how the store location get determined in the sales order line items. We did that exercise. And then uh, we did exercise related to picking. Uh, we did the uh, picking without uh, warehouse management. In that uh, we did a picking using the outbound delivery monitor, which is the VL06P. <clears throat> then another exercise which we did in the last class is uh, how do we create the picking using warehouse management. If I have a warehouse management, then how do we do the picking? So we did that exercise doing the picking with the warehouse management. Then we talked about how do we configure an item category for the picking. So for the picking, the item category the relevance should be on. And we talk about the packing. So how do we do the packing? And what are the different type of packing process in SAP? So these were some of the exercises which I did in the last class on last Sunday. Before that, uh, we did the uh, exercise in which I will talk about shipping points, shipping point determination, backward scheduling, forward scheduling, sales order combination, delivery document structure. Um, so all those different uh, exercises which we talked and which we discussed. So these are the different uh, areas and topics which you have done and performed the exercise so far. So this is where we are picking is the one which we is the last topic last exercise which we did the picking. Then uh, the last is step the last step in the picking process is about how can we create and the post good issue. The post good issue is the last step in the shipping process. So after post good issue, there is no step left. So post good issue is the last step. So good issue is the final step. Good issue will only happen if the delivery document is fully picked. If pick quantity equals to delivery quantity. If uh, batch management is activated, then batch has been confirmed. Another thing here is that when we do the good issue, this is also put an integration between MM and accounting. So this is the integration between MM and accounting. So the, this is very important from the perspective of understanding but at the time of post good issue, integration between sales, inventory, and the finance happens. So post good issue is one of the very important integration points. We're going to talk about that. Good issue can be done manually or can be done collectively. So we have done good issue many, many times. 
with all positive exercises we have done good issue many many time what we want to do is basically that how do we do our post good issue collectively that is what we wanted to discuss and that is the one which you want to to talk about okay so how do we do post good issue manually and how do we do good good issue collectively now we talk about here something called what is the effect of the good issue so with the good issue we discuss good issue is the integration of sd module with inventory module with the finest module the first thing which is very important for us to understand that integration that this is one of the very very important integration point what other things are there update it stock with a good issue quantity so when you do good issue the quantity get updated so that for example i have 1000 pieces if i have done a good issue for 10 then i left the 990 10 pieces are gone it updated my balance sheet it updated my balance sheet that basically means that system update my books financially that is called update my balance sheet is state as a billing document or sales document so sales document is state as updated delivery document is state as get updated so many many different type of statuses get updated in the system if there is a billing block then you can do good issue system post good issue date it record the quantity which has been sent to the customer and only after post good issue billing can be done if you have a sales order which is relevant for delivery in that case billing can only be done after after post good issue without post good issue billing process cannot be done and then here we have something called material document and accounting document which get created so that is another very very important integration point now let us talk about so pgi post good issue is important it is important because of things plus inventory management plus finance integration okay so it is integration of multiple modules Okay, so what are we going to do? So I'm going to create a material. I'm going to do post good post good receipt. So I have a inventory. Verify stock. Transaction code MD zero four. 
Lamana verify stock. And there is a transaction code that is called MD04. This is a new transaction, MD04. Then uh, we're going to create um, sales order V01. Then I'm going to verify MD04. MD04 is a transaction code. Then I'm going to create delivery document. <clears throat> and after creating delivery document, I'm going to verify MD04. We are verifying multi MD04 multiple times. There is a reason for that. Then uh, we're going to perform the ticket. We're going to perform the ticket process. And after that, we're going to perform post good issue. And after post good issue, again, I'm going to verify transaction code MD04. Then I'm going to verify material doc. And I'm going to verify accounting doc. This is integration with the finance. This is integration with the finance. And this material document is integration with inventory. This is our end-to-end -end exercise. So make a note of these steps. Take a note of that. So we log into the system. I want to create a material, means we can use the existing material also, but I'm creating a new material, so we have a entire a new transaction end to end. Otherwise, actually, there is no need uh, to have a, um, then we go to storage one, accounting one. So regular six views, plant 1000, distribution 001, sales organ 1000, distribution channel 10, hit enter. And then this is basically a standard sales material.
this material has no nothing different nothing unique this material i'm just creating so i can have a material otherwise this material has nothing different nothing unique it is similar to the many times the material which you have created it is same material transportation group loading group validation class extend the price and we save it so material 30 775 created this is the material okay <clears throat> so we created a material master record now we going to create a guru sheet so we want to go to create a good receipt migo is a similar uh, several uh, same way we have done uh, this good receipt same way we going to do it so good receipt other moment i 501 plant 1000 is location 001 enter the material quantity sale 1000 pieces So we're creating a stock of 1,000 pieces. Item OK, and we hit check. Green light, and we can save it. So this is a regular good receipt. We have done many, many times. So nothing specific about this good receipt. Okay. So what is document posted? Now after the good receipt, now I want to verify and go to this transaction code MD04. So we go to this transaction code that is called. M D zero four. So this is M D zero four. My plant. And then here we have uh, this is the material three zero seven seven five plant one thousand. And on this date, in stock we have one thousand pieces. So we have 1,000 pieces in its stock. This material in this plant, as of this date, this is stock 1,000 pieces. This is MD04 is stock requirement list. Okay, I open another session. Now let's create a sales order, regular sales order. as we have done many times okay then we enter the sold to party this is regular sales order Enter the material, and I'm creating the sales order. Let us say for 10 pieces. So I'm creating the sales order for 10 pieces. After that, we save the sales order. This sales order is also same sales order as we have done many many of them. Nothing different, nothing unique with the sales order. 
see the message in the bottom sales order 16392 got created so make a note of the sales order and we make a note of the sales order and we make a note of the sales order. Now, after creating sales order, again we go to stock requirement first. So this is the material, and this is the stock. A thousand pieces I had, and uh, after creating sales order, again I there is a refresh button. See that my customer is the refresh button. I have available quantity one thousand, and then I refresh. See what happens. So now system tells me that I have a stock of one thousand, of course. Now I also have a sales order, and that sales order is for ten pieces, and then available quantity become nine ninety. So that is how system keep updating, integrating with demand management. So if I'm a planner, then I will have entire view: how many orders, what is in stock, what is going on with this material. So this is the entire view of the material, which I can have here. Okay. So here, this material in this plant, in this stock, I have 1,000 pieces, and then I have a sales order for 10 pieces, and I left with 990. Okay. I left with. 990 pieces. Yeah. So that is the sales order situation. That is what is in MD04. Now, after creating the sales order, I want to create a delivery document. Transaction code VL10G. So I go back. After creating uh, this, I go to logistics. I go to logistic execution, outbound process, goodies for outbound delivery. Then we have outbound delivery. Create collective processing. We are ten G. We have ten beer, ten G. Okay. So we go to beer, ten G. I put my shipping point. Then I put my sales order number. See, all these different parameters are there. We see that which customer, sales document type, sales area, and if I want a specific sales, I'm putting one sales order so I don't get all the junk. I put my sales order number. So this is the sales order which is created today. One six three nine two. We have a one six three nine two. So we have one six three nine two. You see that purchase orders also are coming here because there are some purchase orders which are available. Then here I want to create this delivery document. There are two options. I can create a dialog or I can create in background. So I create in. Background. Yeah. 
We select that background. See the message in the bottom. See log for information about curating delivery. So there is a log. This is log. This is a delivery creation log. So this group, this date, on this date, one document has been created, no error. So what is that document? So I click on that one. Yeah. So I click on that one, then I go to documents. This is documents. So this is the document number, 180017, and then 375. So I select that, and I go to display document. So this is the delivery document which has been created in the background mode. I make a note of my delivery. I make a note of my delivery. And after creating my delivery, I again want to go to MD04. MD04 is for checking the status again. So now we create delivery, what really happened? Okay. So we close this, we go back, we go back. Now, if I go back here, and then I have a sales order, and then I hit on the refresh button. So this is a refresh button. Now what will come? I had a sales order, now it comes delivery. So system keep updating my stock requirement list. Earlier, there was no sales order and become sales order, then become delivery after the delivery is done. So we can see the whole status and the flow, what is going on in the SAP. So this is the delivery document. After that, we want to perform the picking process. So for that, I go to picking. We go to picking. And uh, we have uh, different uh, transitions for the picking process. We have created transfer order and all that many, many times. Right? We're going to do this create transfer order and all that. Again, see that you're picking. I want to go to our one delivery monitor. I put my shipping point. And then I put date in the little bit in the future. It execute. So I found one delivery eight zero zero one. One seven three five seven. So three five seven. Three five seven. Okay. Now I select here. Now I want to create transfer order. We are not doing that. Is our next exercise. We did uh, last week. We are going to create transfer order again. Item overview. I go to change more. It takes me to delivery. I go to picking. Pick a status A. Pick quantity blank. I put the pick quantity 10 pieces are being picked. The moment I do pick, the status becomes C. And then we hit save. So see the message in the bottom. Delivery 
8001737 has been set. Then I back. And then I back. So what we did, we performed picking process using outbound delivery monitor. Outbound delivery monitor, VL06P. VL06P. Now we're gonna to go to the next step, perform post good issue. Now I want to go to perform good issue, close this, close all these buttons. And then I go to post good issue. And I want to do post good issue. So there is a, we can go to VL02M. So this is the one way where I can click this button. This is what we've been doing all along, right? I don't want to do that, okay? I don't want to do that. Okay. So now I want to go back. And here we have something called collective processing by our outbound delivery monitor. So I want to go to transaction code, something called VL06G. So I want to do delivery using transaction code VL06G. So that is the transaction code. So we're gonna use this transaction code VL06G. This is a transaction code to do EGI in the collective processing. Okay. Then we select on it. I put my shipping point 1000. Then I put my some date in the future. And then I hit execute. So delivery 8001735 has been created. 18017537 has been created. And then we select it. And here we have a post good issue. So this is I'm doing the post good issue using outbound delivery monitor. Good issue day, let's say today. I hit enter. See the message in the bottom, one successful and zero uncorrect. So we have successful, and because successfully become green. So because this is successful, this become green. So we have done our bundle the monitor, become green. We go back, we go back, okay. So we done the delivery. Now what happened to my next step is to check my FD04. We again go back, we had a delivery last time. I hit a refresh button again. I had a 1000 pieces here, 10 pieces of delivery, available stock after by 990, I refresh. Now see what happened. The delivery which we had is gone. So that basically means the requirement for the delivery has been fulfilled. The requirement for the delivery has been fulfilled. So this is my material 30775, plant 1000. Material type is this. This is my stock, and available stock is 990. That is impact on stock requirement list. Now I want to see what is uh, integration. So for that, I go to document flow. So go to VL02 and for example. So here we have a document flow. Now this is the situation. So we have a sales order completed, delivery in process because we have not invoiced. 
picking completed, post good issue completed. Now I want to verify these two documents. So now I want to verify something called material document. Where is this material document? If you select this button here, and if I go to display document, it takes me to something called material document. This is MM. This material document is a document in MM module, in inventory management module. What is this MM document or materials management document or inventory management document tells us? This tells me that on this date, this is the material document number by this user. This is the quantity, 10 pieces of this material, 100 from this plant. So there is a plant 1000, it's location 001, and movement F601. Any kind of good movement, good issue, good receipt, we do, there's movement type. When we did Guru Seed, movement type was 501. So 501 is a movement type for Guru Seed, miscellaneous Guru Seed. Then we did a minus sign here. Minus means there's a good issue. Material has been issued. And we saw that, yes, material is gone. Earlier we have 1000 pieces, now we have 90, 10 pieces are gone. So when we do the Guru issue, quantity of the material reduces. Minus. If you see the minus, what is minus means good issue. Minus means good issue. Then here we also have something called accounting document. So I select on accounting document. Now this is in finance. Now we are going to finance. There's accounting document here. This document number is 5000668. This is 4900. So they're two different documents. One, this is a material document. This is the accounting document. Material document, update inventory. Accounting document, update finance. Two different documents get created automatically. They are the same. Inventory got reduced. Material document got created. Accounting document got created. If I go to accounting document, if I click on it, Now this is my finance document. Now what is going on in the finance document? In the finance document, this is what's going on. My finished good inventory, and there's the amount here. Let me just make it a little bit shorter. So this is my finished good inventory. This is account. This is account and finance. Inventory is reduced. Credit. Because inventory went out, so inventory account is credit. So what does it happen? Credit. Make a note of all this. Credit. Finished. Good inventory account. And then there is a debit. In debit, my cost of good sold account. So this is debit. And there's a credit. Okay. Make a note of it. Credit and the debit. Make a note of all this. This is our end to end post good issue exercise. So what happens is <clears throat> document status get updated. We saw that uh, A means not done, B means partially done, C means complete done. 
as you see here, that status is in the delivery document, the header and the line item label. This is the delivery document. Then you will see that if you go to item label, they are different. If you double click on it, they are different item status. Picking, see fully done. Confirmation, fully done. Good issue, fully done. Billing, not started yet. If I go to header, then the header also, picking done, status say, confirmation, good issue. So this is what we see here, document status. System automatically updates the document status. There's this screen we see at the header, the line item. Picking, packing, different strategies. This is item level status. So this is header status. This is item status. <clears throat> Those statuses we saw that in the delivery. Header of the line item is status get updated. The status also get updated in the sales order line item as well. So here in the delivery, head of the line item, we get a status. But if I go to sales order, if I go to sales order, that in the sales order also there is a status. The sales order. Here also there is a status. These are the status. De delivery status fully delivered. After PGI, it's become fully delivered. If you go to line item, there is a status in the sales order at the line item also. The status is both. So here also, there is a status. Delivery status, fully delivered. Means in this sales order, this item has been fully delivered. Header status, line item in the sales order. So based upon what is happening in delivery, sales order, header, and item status also get updated. So we created delivery. We created a picking. We created a packing. We did a good issue. Check knowledge. Well, I don't have a knowledge, so I can't check it. You guys are knowledgeable. You guys can check your knowledge. I am just innocent, illiterate person. I'm just trying to learn. Any questions? Any question concern? If you see here, there is a bottom, there's an Accenture. Yeah. Some other places I didn't remove it because I, when I was working with Accenture, I was seen that with them. Okay, so go to Lean Warehouse. So the next topic is about Lean Warehouse. So what is, in SAP, what you can do, so of course, the very first thing is without warehouse management. So you can do picking and all that directly at direct. So we can do 
logic segregation without warehouse management in this what happens is the inventory management will be handled at the store location level so inventory management will be handled on store location level at i am level then we also did a wm in that case what will happen is the inventory management will be happening at a bin location level we did that also by structure right so we can do picking at the store location level that we did in the last class we did that today also so today's picking was also at the store location level when we did the picking today so the picking which we did was at the store location level and then the last class which we did here we did where we created transfer order and all that this was an example of creating your pick bill warehouse management in which we created a material bill warehouse we created a stock in the warehouse then we created sales order delivery and very by the picking the who we did hold and then we also created a document that is called transfer order the transfer order is a document which is a central document to carry out to carry out warehouse processes so we can carry out warehouse processes using transfer order then we talked about with lean wm i have not seen anybody using lean lean in what happens in the lean is if you look at it it's kind of a little bit of a hybrid model in that what is happening is inventory is still being done at the store location level like option number 1 but system allow you to create a transfer order so you can still create a transfer order i haven't seen anybody using bw to be honest because it's kind of confusing but option is there so which basically means using lean i am still creating the inventory at my store location level but it still system allow me to create a transfer order so the purpose is to create a transfer order the question is if i don't create inventory at a i am uh, at a bin location level then why should i have this step of creating a transfer order so not very very you know people use is very com very very rare that someone will use a lean wm but option is still is there so we talk about the bin what is the bin uh, based the warehouse location warehouse location basically allow you to do bin management in which you can do different kind of inventory we can do assignment with bin which we did in the last lecture yeah. this is our warehouse okay in the warehouse uh, what system will do so in the warehouse management so we can do a plant plant is assigned to its location and its location is assigned to warehouse so this is a picture so if you remember in the last exercise which we did in this exercise when i asked you to create a material we created that in the store location 0088 not 001 if you remember the reason for that is because its store location 0088 in the standard icp is connected to the warehouse so there is a hot organization hierarchy is like a plant is to location and is to location is connected to warehouse and the bin in the warehouse have different areas you see that here storage area 1 is storage area 2 storage area 3 bin in the each area you have multiple bins so if you take an example you know day to day life let's like say you go to costco for example if you are going to when you are going to costco in a way you are going to a warehouse because um that is nothing but a warehouse so what is that basically mean so if you go to warehouse 
you know, you have an inflow, you have outgate flow. That basically means there's in gate, there's out gate. So people coming in, people going out. Then you have a storage area one, a storage area two, a storage area three. Now, what is the meaning of the storage area? Like when you do the cost code, you have different areas. This is the pharma, pharmaceuticals area. This is the electronic goods area. This is groceries area. This is apparel area. This is food and uh, area. This is uh, other area. So you have a different warehouse divided into different areas. And then within the pharmaceutical, you have a different bins. We have some bin, uh, pharma medicine here, some of medicine there, some in the back, and some in the front. So when you look at a cost code, you're looking at typical warehouse. When you're looking at uh, Best Buy, you're looking at a warehouse. When you look at a cost code, you're looking at a warehouse. When you look at the Home Depot, you're looking at a warehouse. When you go to Walmart, looking at a warehouse. Because in Walmart also, what you will see? The same thing. You have a electronic section, you have a grocery section, you have a apparel section, you have a men's section, you have a women's section, you have a children's section. And within each section, each area, you have a different bins and material being kept. Same thing which you see here, okay? That is a typical layout. We talked about that we can create a transfer order. So when you're using a warehouse management, and that is one thing we did in the last exercise, that we create a transfer order with a to delivery using transaction code LT03. We're gonna create a transfer order in different ways also. So LT03 is one of the transaction code which can be used to create a transfer order. So transfer order is a central document. So when you're using a WM, whether lean or otherwise, so you create a transfer order with reference to delivery. And transfer order becomes the basis to do the picking. That is what we did in last exercise. We did transfer order. And then with reference to transfer order, we completed the picking process. Okay. That is what this basically means. So we're gonna do one more exercise. Okay. So I wanna do another exercise on warehouse management. I will probably use the same steps, but few differences. So this exercise with the warehouse and with collective processing. Um, I'm going to use the same material. So I'm going to use the same material, which I created in the last class because this is warehouse views. Um, and then I'm going to create a material and all those different things. Okay. Then I want to create transfer business to delivery using outbound Delivery monitor. So I'm going to use our one delivery monitor and then I'm going to create a transport. Okay. The same material I'm going to use, which is 30734, and then I'm going to create a sales order VA01. I'm creating a sales order. Okay, hit enter. Enter the customer. Item. Enter the sales order. Now for this material also, So this is the material 30734. So if I go to stop overview MD04, if you want to re repeat the same strike again in MD04, and then we hit enter. So 
So here, for this material, WM, we already have Okay. So we have material 30734, and then uh, I have 1000 pieces. There is already some delivery for 10 pieces, and I have a 990. And this is the delivery which we created last time. So because we didn't do a post graduate, because we have this delivery we created last time. So that is why this delivery document appears here. Right. Okay. So now I'm creating a new sales order. This is my sold to ship to customer material quantity 10 pieces. Just to make it the oddball, I make it let us say 15 pieces, and then we sell it. So I'm creating a sales order for 15 pieces. The sales order has been set. So I make a note of the sales order. I create a sales order here. Then there is a delivery. I refresh. Then new sales order appears for 15 pieces. Now what system says? Then in stock, I have 1,000 pieces. I have a delivery for 10 pieces so from the last time because we didn't have post good issue because the delivery is still open. So I left with a 990. Then we get on a sales order, and that is uh, for 15 pieces. And the remaining quantity, available quantity is 975. So 10, 15, 25, minus 1,000, 975. Okay. So after the sales order, we select the sales order, we want to go and create delivery. So we go back. Now we want to create a delivery. I want to go to delivery. I want to create delivery via 10G. Up to maximum stock. I put my sales order number. I say none. I hit execute and our sales order number appears. Okay, last time we created the foreground, uh, sorry, background, and then we're going to create a dialog. And see the message at the bottom. It's a delivery document. Now, see the where all is status not yet picked. WMA, uh, WB status, blank. No, no transfer order required. Now here, I enter my location, double zero, double eight. The moment I enter my double zero, double eight, the, it becomes status A means WM transfer order required. Why that is the case? Because this transfer, uh, this, uh, where it's two location, double zero, double eight, is connected. So this double zero, double eight is connected to where else? And then we sell it. So we are creating a delivery, collective processing, and see the message in the bottom, delivery document has been saved. Okay. And the delivery document is 370, uh, 354, 358. We go back. We go back. And uh, I go to delivery. I make a note of my delivery document. So we create a delivery document. Now, after creating delivery document, I want to check my stock requirement list. So there's an order, there's a delivery, there's a, this is the order for uh, 15 pieces. So I refresh. This also becomes delivery now. So it's convert. This is called MRP elements from sales order, it comes into MRP means material requirement planning. This is MRP, this is demand management. 
okay sales house so you say delivery now what i want to do i want to create a transfer order okay so for that i close this now i want to go to picking and last time when we created picking we created picking using transaction code at the 03 we use transaction code at the 03 this time i don't want to use at the 03 okay and now i want to go to vl 06p we click on it we put 1000 Hit execute. System gives me delivery 358. 358. Now here, system tells me, I select here. Now, do you want to create a TO in ground and foreground? I want to create a T uh, transaction code in foreground. Hit enter. We save. Here's a message in the bottom. Transfer order 100039 created. We make a note of it. Go back. And here, you have confirmed transfer order. And then there is a transition code VL06T. And I put here outbound delivery for confirmation. So I have one delivery which I need to configure. I select that and confirm in the foreground. Hit enter and hit save. See the message at the bottom? One pick up, pick up put away order confirmed successfully, zero errors. Green light we got. It's confirmed. So, what we did? Outbound delivery for confirmed. So, we created outbound delivery monitor and then confirmation using outbound delivery monitor so we did a creation of the transfer order also using outbound delivery monitor and the confirmation of the transfer order also we did with the outbound delivery monitor so that is the difference between this transfer order and the last transfer order if i want to go back and then i want to do pgi I put my uh, document here, hit enter. So this is the delivery I have. I want to go and do the PGI and I did the PGI. So now the complete process and we do PGI. And one successful and zero incurred good moment. Now I had a, this a delivery for 15 pieces. I refresh. Let's go. This delivery is the main. Let us continue with our discussion. And um, Before I move forward, is there any questions, concerns? Which we have discussed. Any point at all? Okay. So let us continue. Discussion today. So the next topic is about 
shipment process. So how do we create shipment? Now, remember, shipping document, shipping process, and uh, shipment process is two different things. Yeah? <clears throat> so if we go here. If you go to a logistic execution, and uh, if you go to transportation, transportation planning, and here we have a certain different document. If I go back here, VD zero one n, then here we have something called. Create shipment. You see that here. So there is here something called create shipment. So shipment document is the basis for transportation. Delivery document delivery document is the basis for shipping function. like picking, packing, loading, etc. So, so far we have created a delivery document. We have to be very careful what we are talking about. We have here shipment document, and shipment document is the basis for the transportation function. Transportation, yeah. The transportation means when I'm when I'm uh, sending this material to the customer, what kind of trans uh, what kind of uh, transportation we gonna use, yeah. Which kind of truck we gonna use? What kind of shipping mode we gonna use? So all those different transportation related functions are created on the basis of this document, which is called shipment document. So they're two different documents. We need to be clear that what we are referring and talking about here. So that is a transportation form. And delivery document is the basis for Shipping function. So now when we say shipping function, so like picking is a shipping function. Packing the material into a box and all that is a shipping function. Loading the material onto the truck is a shipping function. Okay, so you can make a note of it. So here we have something called outbound shipment and we have inbound shipment. So we have something called outbound shipment. Outbound shipment, as the name suggests, when the material is going out. For example, if we are sending material customer from our warehouse 
So from our warehouse, if I'm sending the material to the customer, that is example of an outbound shipment process. Then we have inbound shipment. Inbound shipment when we are receiving receiving material from vendor to our warehouse location. So make a note of it. So material going out, for example, sending the material to customer. That is an example of an outbound shipment. Material coming in from the vendor. This is an example of a that is an example of a inbound shipment. So outbound shipment. And then we have inbound shipment. Okay. So we can make a note of all these bullet points. So that is why we have outbound shipment and the inbound shipment. So what is the purpose of transportation? So shipment document is the basis for the transportation function as we discussed. So what is, does it do? For example, it do the transportation planning and processing. Transportation planning basically means we need a truck when? We need tomorrow, we need day after tomorrow, how many truck? We need five, one, 16. Transportation planning. Great calculation. If I'm sending this material, using this truck then how much freight we're going to pay then we have freight settlement freight settlement basically means when we actually make a payment for the freight to the customer that is called freight settlement calculation of the customer's freight do i need to charge this um, freight to the customer sometimes we also charge the freight to the customer as well. So do we need to charge that to the customer? Okay. What is the choice, choice of service provider? When we have a different trucking company, I need a truck, but there are so many trucking company. So who is the provider of the trucking company? So who is the provider of the trucking company? What is the mode of transport and transport aids? Mode of means of transport. So we need a truck and we need a, how large truck, a small truck, big truck. Tracing and monitoring of the shipment process. As we loading a start, loading in. What is the overall process? And then obviously management of the shipment cost. So all these different functions are done in SAP using the something called transportation module. So that is what we are discussing right now. In the transportation module, so we create shipment. So there is a shipment document. This is a create shipment. We're going to do that exercise. This is create shipment document. So we create shipment document. 
Then we also have something called create shipment cost document. This is a shipment cost document. If we close this button, and uh, here we have shipment cost document. Shipment cost document. Shipment cost document. Shipment cost document is being used for the purpose of calculating the freight. So we're going to charge freight ten dollars, or should be twenty dollars, or two hundred dollars, or five hundred dollars. How much is the freight? So freight can be based upon different things. So you know. Based upon the weight, based upon the volume, based upon the type of material, based upon all those different situations. So, what is going to be the freight amount? So, that is why we have credit shipment document and credit shipment cost document. So, these are the two different documents which we have. So, what I would like you guys to make a note of. These two documents, which I highlighted in yellow color, because these two describe what is the shipment document. So make a take the take the pen and paper or typing it if it you know is the central document used to model the shipment in SAP ECC system. So this basically means. That. We will be creating we will be creating shipment document. So this is a central document, the shipment document, how we create and all that we can talk about. The shipment document is the basis to do the entire shipping process. It contains all the information. So all information related to shipment is contained in this document, like the means of transport, who is the service provider, what date, what is status, what route we're going to follow. And we see also transportation output. Transportation output basically means when you're sending the material to the truck, the truck guy should have some kind of bill of lading, some packing list, some documents. So those are called transportation outputs. Then we can also have a dangerous good. Dangerous good means when you're transporting the goods, sometimes you have to make certain declarations. Because whether this material, like for example, you cannot uh, you know, send every material through the airlines. There's a restrictions. You can't send every material with the trucks. There's a restriction. If you're sending the gasoline, you can't send the gasoline in open truck. There's a restrictions. So because of the hazards, and for different material in the transportation, there are statutory and legal restrictions. So that is for dangerous good data. So shipment document provides the following function. So what does the shipment document does for us? Okay. So shipment document combine or make a note of these two blood points which is highlighted. So what is that? <coughs> what is that basically mean? It combines multiple outbound deliveries to form a shipment. So it is possible that in one outbound shipment we have one delivery. So you have a sales order, sales order goes to delivery, and delivery goes to shipment document. Now in the shipment document you can have a one delivery or you can have a multiple deliveries. Okay. So if you come back here, if you go to shipment document. If we go to shipment document here. Okay. And we're going to create shipment document also. And then we use transportation planning document. And we use a transportation planning document 1000. And we go to shipment type. And we go into shipment. And you see that here. Select delivery. Which deliveries you want? Okay. You can choose as many deliveries as you want. These are deliveries and give me all deliveries for a particular customer. 
do i have any delivery for this customer no there is no delivery for this customer okay i take my customer out and i do it without customer do i have any deliveries i have many many deliveries these are all different deliveries which are there these are delivery which could have been shipped but they have not yet been shipped and that is what we see here that is what we see here combining outbound delivery to form a shipment so you can combine multiple deliveries into one shipment you can assign service agent mode of transport shipping type service agent service agent basically mean the name of trucking company mode of transport basically means it is going by the truck shipment type basically means is going by the road and you can define all of them here and we're going to see that so let's say select this delivery and then there's so many of them so here we have transportation yeah. in the transportation tab there is a transportation plan this transportation planning status has to be a and only if this status is a you can do the transportation plan now from the delivery document i go to the document flow and from the document flow i go to the sales order so first and foremost in the sales order there are a lot of information for the shipping and transportation that information has to be there we double click on it and i go to shipping tab so here we have a first and foremost there is a to plant there is a shipping point and then there is a route then we are talking about here various other function you know mode of transport shipment type and all that so we see that we have here shipping type what is my shipping type going to truck train ship airplane driver of load whatever you can also have a, but means of the transportation type in the pallet trailer you know what kind of trailer smi truck smi rail what all that means wagons a lot of this information can be entered in the sales order as well and from the sales order they come to delivery and then from the delivery they go to shipment document that's what we see here the structure of the shipment document so what is the structure of the shipment document so we go back i go back this my delivery document i select my delivery document number we go back let's say we want to save your data now and then i select my delivery here now if you want you can also select your special delivery see the our delivery number if you click on it and if you hit enter you can only select one delivery you know because the last time i have selected multiple delivery because if you only choose only selected delivery or good delivery you can choose that also you can select all of them you can select some of them or you can select a specific delivery 
So this time I put delivery number, and I just want uh, you know include delivery in shipment. You see that include delivery in shipment, remove delivery from shipment. I said include delivery in the shipment. And after that, you see that here there is overview of the current shipment. If I go to overview button. So assign my delivery to the shipment, and here I have my in individual shipment and all that information which you enter here, which we're talking about. This is what you see here. It is a shipment header, <coughs> shipment line item. So there is a we can define shipment overview and all that information. And that is what you see here. There is something called transportation planning point. When we create a delivery, when we create a shipment document, we enter transportation planning point. Okay, make a note of this transportation planning point. Make a note of it. Transportation planning point. So we have uh, we talk about uh, shipping point. So shipping point is organization unit which allow you to create a delivery document. For shipment document, we have organization unit that is called transportation planning point. Transportation planning point is organization unit which is used for the purpose of transportation. The transportation planning point is organized unit which is used in transportation planning. It is a central point. Within the company that plans, process, and monitors shipments. So this is the organized unit which is responsible for transportation function. Then your shipping point, which is responsible for delivery function. Now see the next one. It's each shipment is created and processed by a single transportation planning point. So when we create a shipment document, that shipment document is only created by a one transportation planning point. It is specific to a company code. In assignment, you can define and you can assign. So transportation planning point is an organization unit. We go back to SAP and we go to configuration also. So I want to show you shipping point and all that as well. If you go to enterprise structure, if you go to definition, if you go to uh, logistic journal, so here we have a plant which we define because it's part of a logistic channel. Then we looked at it as a part of MM. We looked at it as part of a purchase organization which we created and store location which we configured. There is a, in the warehouse management, we have a logistic integration. And in the bottom, we have something called maintain transportation planning point. So here we can define shipping point. And here you can define transportation planning point. Shipping point you need for delivery document, and transportation planning point you need for the purpose of shipment document creation. If I click on it, here you can create transportation planning point. And you can have as many as transportation planning point as you want. And this is the transportation planning point. All these transportation planning points have been defined. And these transportation planning points are assigned to company code. That is what we see here in the last point. Company code is assigned to transportation planning point. So now this is a good breaking point. So, so first of all, thank you. And uh, talk to you next week.
We'll talk next week. It's a good breaking point now. Thank you.